Good morning. Today we'll be analyzing projectile motion with the video clip you just saw. The first objective will be to determine the distance he can jump. Objective two is launch velocity. And objective three, the maximum height. For all of the analysis today, we'll be breaking apart the motion into an X and a Y direction. So why are we doing this? Well, in the Y direction, there is only a single force acting on Spider-Man. That's the force of gravity. And the Y direction is set up so that it's parallel to the force of gravity. In the Y direction, Spider-Man will experience an acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second. The X direction is always set up perpendicular to the Y direction. And specifically today, we'll note that there are no forces acting in the X direction. And so since we're assuming there's no forces along the X direction, this implies that in the X direction there will be constant velocity. Now the forces acting on any projectile while in flight are gravity, air resistance or drag, and possibly lift. However, for all of these problems, we will assume that the only force acting on the projectile is gravity. Hence, acceleration or changing velocities only takes place in the vertical direction, the up-down direction, as was previously mentioned. So the y direction only, you will get acceleration. And the velocity in the horizontal direction remains constant. So in the x direction, constant velocity. And so here's objective one, to determine the distance that Spider-Man has jumped. Well, in this case, because we're assuming there are no forces in the x direction, then we can use this simple formula for distance, velocity multiplied by the time of flight. Now the velocity is 6.96 meters per second. This velocity was determined from a previous analysis done in the following video, kinetic energy of an action hero. If you're interested in that analysis, you can see how we determined 6.96 meters per second of time of flight. How do we get the time of flight from the video? Well, we're going to count the number of frames. Now, if you're watching this video on YouTube and you have a computer, with the video paused on a computer, you can do the following. You can use the period key to move the video one frame forward. Or you can use the comma key to move the video one frame backward. So you can do this with any YouTube video, but it's important that when you do this, initially the video has to be paused. So with the video pause, when Spider-Man is at the position highlighted with the white circle, I then begin pressing the period key. Every time I press the period key, I notice that the video advances one frame at a time forward. And I keep doing this until Spider-Man lands. That landing position is highlighted yellow. Now in total, when I did this, I pressed the period key 57 times. In other words, there was 57 frames from when Spider-Man took off to when he landed. This specific video was recorded at 24 frames per second. So doing some math, we end up with 2.375 seconds. That's Spider-Man's time of flight. And so multiplying, we end up with a distance of 16.5 meters. The long jump record is only around nine meters. Objective two, Spider-Man's launch velocity. Here's a diagram of Spider-Man just before he launches. And so that's our goal. We're going to have to determine the components of the vector of the velocity vector in order to get the velocity. 
we'll also have to determine the angle theta. Now, which component do we already know? Please pause the video now. One of those components we already know, which component is it? Pause the video. I hope you gave that some thought. We know the x component of velocity, 6.96 meters per second. That came from objective one. So the real problem now is, how do we determine Spider-Man's launch velocity in the upwards direction, in the y direction? And so let's look at this picture one more time. We are making one big assumption here that the two buildings are at the exact same height. So we're assuming if the two buildings are at the exact same height, his displacement is zero. In other words, his starting position in the y direction and his end position in the y direction are the same. We know the time of flight is 2.375 seconds. And we know the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second per second. So here's an equation we can use to solve for the initial velocity in the y direction. Please pause the video now and try it out. Okay, I hope you worked through the math. And the launch velocity in the y direction is 11.64 meters per second up. Now we have our vector triangle to solve. Please pause the video now. All right, I hope you tried that using Pythagorean theorem. We end up with a hypotenuse of 14 meters per second or a launch velocity of 14 meters per second. Using opposite over adjacent and inverse tangent, we end up with a launch angle of 59 degrees. So that's Spider-Man's launch velocity, 14 meters per second at an angle of 59 degrees with respect to the horizontal. Finally, our last objective was to determine his maximum height. So that's the maximum height labeled there. And how do we do this? Well, whenever we're looking for maximum height, we're really looking for displacement. Again, we know the acceleration, and we know his initial velocity in the upwards direction. He's pushing off the ground, and his launch velocity is 11.64 meters per second up. Now, at maximum height, any time we have maximum height, his velocity in the y direction is zero. And that's for any object that achieves a maximum height. Final velocity is zero. Here's an equation I'd like you to use to solve for maximum height or the displacement. Pause the video now. Okay, there's the mathematics involved. And the displacement ends up being 6.9 meters. Now the world record for high jump is around 2.5 meters. So Spider-Man would clearly break any world record. I hope you enjoyed today's analysis, and I also hope this gives you some of the tools to analyze your own videos. Have a great day. Bye-bye.